Yo, what's going on, guys? We're back for another episode of the Thickest Thieves podcast. I am rapper Neat Rose. And I am David Elijah Pearsall, the big forehead director. David. Dabi, is what they call me. <laughs> Neat. And today, Dabi. We're going to have a ton of fun. Without further ado, let's mask up like we finna rob, rob something. something. <laughs> Bro, what are we doing? Are we dumb? I think so. Look, look at the type of stuff we try to do for the internet. That, that was just improv. Greg drew these. Yo, I was going to say, Greg, yo, yo shout out to key. Greg, bro. This is accurate. I don't know what he... I, where are my ears? Bro, yo, you... Let I, me see yours real quick, Nate. You know what I look like? I got, I got like... Yeah, I know, bro. He you did look me, like he, a peanut. <laughs> I do you. look like a peanut, bro. A peanut, dude, like a drippy Who's peanut. With, with nice Thanos, though. I got the Thanos chin. Or? What'd you say, Leaky? A peanut who's about to like rob a convenience store. Right. The, yeah. You got the, that hat on. I look like a, I like boss baby. Hey, hey, <laughs> yo, to be, to be real though, just based on avatars, I'm whooping your ass for sure. That I dude, mean, that, I feel that, like that, I'm that peaceful, bro. Look at my eyelashes, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. You, got, you got them long lashes. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, what's yeah. up, baby? Okay. Nate, wait, I got one more. You look what? like that TikToker you like. Aldo, <laughs> you look like Aldo. I he love Aldo. Like you Aldo. know what? And for some I mean, reason, Aliki, the way that Aliki's laptop is reflecting off her shirt <laughs> right there, I thought that was a cat standing beside her on the table. Anyways, side note, that threw me off for like a split David, second. That's just the mushrooms we took before this episode. Oh, uh, gosh, I, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Josh Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aliki, we got a game. It looks like we got scruples. We already kind of know what the deal is, but but tell us yeah. anyway. Yeah, this is a tried and true. So we're playing Scruples for everyone at home. Scruples is an old card game from the 80s. Uh, it's basically a game about moral dilemmas. So I went through and picked some of my faves. You guys are going to draw a card, read the question out loud. Okay. Write on your marker board what yep. you think the other person's going to say. <laughs> then you guys will show your answers and then say your answers. Okay? Okay. Deal. Um. If you're right, you get a point. Most points wins. Now, the loser is going to have to do a dance anytime I play music for the rest of the episode. Okay. And we're just going to keep that music is this, a this secret is a, until it starts playing. It's got to... We, let's raise the stakes. It's got to be a dumb dance. It's got to be something stupid. Okay. Yeah. I think the song will just bring that... It will just bring that out Okay. You. All right. Fair enough. So. All right. Let's do it, baby. All right, let's go. You, want, you Maybe we'll go best of seven. We'll see how we're feeling. Let's run it. All right. Okay. When you pick up your car at the garage, you discover that additional repairs not from the accident were made and charged to your insurance. Do you tell the insurance company? <laughs> Ooh, that, is a t that one's tough. Read it one more time for the people. When you pick up your car at the garage, you discover that additional repairs not from the accident were made and charged to your insurance. Do you tell the insurance company? Oh, okay. Do we need to clarify anything? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I'm locked in, baby. This marker so this is, is nice. This, you're writing down what you think I would say. Yep, I got you. All right. Three, two, one. No. 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 That no. ain't my... That, that, sorry. Y'all messed up. I also that pay you a lot me. of money, too. Like, that, I pay insurance a lot of money that's for true. nothing. That's and true. I already, and you know why I thought that was for you? Because I already know you have a... You have a certain... Uh, I don't like insurance yeah, exactly, companies. Exactly. Yeah. We won't get into it, but... That one's easy. <laughs> that one's easy. I used to work with uh, people in... Uh, like, next to people in risk management, yeah. and I just... I hear the way that things are structured to... Right. You know, for those ends. It's like, yeah. yeah. For me, right. I'm the same way. It's when I found out that Aliki worked at Asurion, I really started hating it. Yeah. Yeah. But we yeah. don't like Asurion no more. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, you know what? Shout out Asurion, honestly, for, for letting Aliki go, because... She leveled up, yeah, for sure. Also, they they we do insure my cell phone, so I do shout out to them for that. Yeah. All right, your turn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I read this. Yeah. My so turn to read. We, we each got a point, right? Nobody gets a point. Nobody gets a point. Okay. okay I'm just gonna zero it out. It doesn't matter. All right. Shrupel two. What is that? What that is? Uh, Shrupel? Dwight Shrupel? We can Shrupel. Call it Shrupel. Uh, you know, I actually thought it was Shrupel this whole time. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> a disheveled young man incoherently asks you for directions. Yep. You notice he is wearing a hospital identification bracelet. Do you notify the hospital? One more again for the people in the back. A disheveled oh. young man incoherently asks you for directions. You notice he is wearing a hospital identification bracelet. Do you notify the hospital? So boy is most likely What like color insane. is his hair? His hair is, uh, it's blonde. How tall is he? Six, eight. 
six eight. He's six eight. That's what it says on the card. Okay. Yeah. And it was also nineteen eighty six. This card was developed. <laughs> okay. Mm, this is a dark one. <laughs> this is a real dark one. This is a real brain brain gamble here. What would Nate do? Oh, I put an eight instead of a yet. Yeah. And ready? Three, two, one. Yes. I put no. What's your answer? My answer is no. The reason I wouldn't do it is because I've seen too many movies with insane asylums. What about you? I think mine's yes. Ooh. Uh, okay, here's the thing. Morally, I think yes. Would I actually do it? Probably no. But I'm going to say yes. I think I would. Yeah. I, I'm only saying this because. He's incoherent. He That's said a he's big part incoherent right. and disheveled. And he's. So So it's like if. First off, liability to like society potentially. But secondly, yeah. he might hurt himself. Right. There's a reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I'm getting a vibe where it's like dudes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He he needs some help, you know. Right. If I just leave him out here not having no help, for sure. No, I got you. You know, if, especially if he's six eight. If he's six eight, he can do a lot of damage. Yeah, that is a big crazy detail you know that wasn't saying? actually on the card. That, that but boy yeah, damn yeah, near yeah. Shaquille O'Neal size. Yeah, I think I wouldn't do it just because, man. I feel like I see, you know, I see someone like Greg maybe ending up in a psych ward at some point. And yeah, so yeah. for me, it's like if I see, you know, if it was my my friend your brother like i feel like i would want someone to let him go you know what i mean yeah you know what i mean so yeah. you know it's just the hentai addiction that's not that's not a it's not a like a psychological thing that's just a he just likes cartoons but one of the treatments that they do inside those psych orders is they overwhelm his brain with hentai to the point of what is disgusting so like it's better for him to get out of it and work through it on a <laughs> like a religious standpoint <laughs> i don't know why this why has this become a bit like <laughs> just, just okay Have you ever seen a clockwork orange greg Yes. It's yeah. Yeah. Clockwork Orange is crazy. crazy. Actually, that has a crazy scene in it. They have a scene. Yeah. It's pretty, bleep that. Pretty, bleep that. But yeah. Yeah. It's very uncomfortable. All right. Next one, baby. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Let's let's clarify real quick. So you guys both got that. We one both right we too. both got correct. Yeah. So we're both yeah. still even. Okay. Yeah. And you're writing on your boards what you think the other person's gonna say. Yeah, that's right. And yep. The, okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Here we go. Moral dilemma. I like this, honestly. I do too. And you know what? Participate in the audience. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. I need to know what you guys think. You're unemployed and enjoying the freedom. All right, let me let me restart that. Okay. I read that without the period. You You're unemployed up. and enjoying the freedom. To collect unemployment insurance, you are expected to look for a job. Do you take the money if you aren't actively looking for a job? Hmm. That that one actually is tough. So you're Unemployed and getting unemployment paychecks. No, you're you're unemployed and enjoying the freedom. Oh, okay. To collect unemployment insurance, you are expected to look for a job. Do you take the money if you aren't actually so, okay, looking? Okay, got you. Oof, this is okay. I'm thinking for myself a lot, and I forget I got to think for Nate. Think for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Got it. All right. Three, two, one. Yes. No. Dang it. I was going for like the, you know, the. Bro. It, I, it, the, what it, am I, a loser? Well, dang, dude. Am I a total loser? No, I, was, I wasn't going that route at all. Let me explain. Okay, go what ahead. What I was going for was like, I don't think you would. Actually, you're right. I'm, I'm right about you. Yeah, you yeah, wouldn't. you're right. I'm, we're on the same page. Okay. We morally do the same okay. thing. What I was thinking, though, is that I thought, you know, I've heard you say stuff like, yo, like we got the PPP loan, for example. Now, there's that's not morally right you know there's no moral qual about it but you're like i'm taking advantage of what i can get so i thought like right. maybe you're like hey well but i, I think I, yeah i think that's different like because there were pre the prerequisite was that i had a business right. between this period of time like right. i met the qualifications yeah. for it so and i'm paying taxes so like yeah. sure but dang it to, i was the, trying the, to use my i was trying to like think no 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 you're good but i'm just like bro like if you i mean the the, the fact that it said i'm enjoying the freedom is crazy. So it's like I'm just enjoying not having yeah, a job yeah, yeah. and letting letting other Americans about. subsidize yeah. my my just playing yeah. video games or whatever the hell I'm doing. Right? Hell no, nah, bro. Get off your ass. This is this is implemented expressly for the purpose of helping you find new employment. Yeah. Don't be an asshole. You can have this conversation between you and Greg, but alone. Like you don't have to do it on the show. <laughs> now nah, got me worked up. Yeah. Okay. No, I just had to make it clear what I thought. Greg's working right now. Yeah, yeah, he's literally on the job, <laughs> like as we speak. Sorry, Greg. My, my, my like man really just you. works. Um, all right, 
Go it's ahead, my turn. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so I, I'm up a point. You're up a point. If it's up, it's just stuck. I'm just going to count the ones where you guys both got it right. So the score right now is three to two. Three to two. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. Scruple three. Hold four. on. Let me, hold on, let me get locked in numbers. real quick. You locked in? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. ready. The service department at the garage forgets to charge you for the $6 oil filter. You think the labor charge is too high anyway. Do you mention the oil filter? This one's kind of similar too. All righty. I got my answer. Three, two, one. Yes. No. You're saying no. I'm saying that you would have said, you would have charged. You would have told him. I would say no. Dang, dude. Wait, would I would you have say said yes. Really? I would have told them, yeah. You if they if they didn't charge you for a six dollar oil filter? Like they they, they, they changed forgot it, to charge you. They forgot to charge you. Yeah. So yeah. so you would you would get your receipt and you'd be like, Hey, I would I noticed that you didn't charge me for the six dollar oil filter. Yeah. Add it to it. And I have a little bit of bias, yeah. To be real. What's what's your bias? I have people in my my family who I still that still and i I think there's like a mental bias there. It's like I don't want to be I don't want the conviction of yeah. the thought of even stealing or yeah. like, even if it was on someone else's fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think I look, you're, that's probably correct. Like I, I'm just kind of like, yo, if, if they didn't charge me for it and it also, we're talking about $6. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, yo, you guys just put it. It's like, if you make a mistake or an oversight, right. like, you know, that's on you, my boy. It might, it, it, it might, yeah. you know, you're probably yeah. in the right. You're probably in the right. I mean, you should say something. Yeah. But but I I don't think I actually would. We forgot, but to, we forgot to charge someone for the grip van. Did we? No. Oh, if we. I mean, that's two hundred and what fifty or three fifty, depending. That is a lot more money. Never mind. That that didn't work out. My favor. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot more money. It's two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to recharge you. But boy. six dollars for a filter. Now now I don't even think it's relevant the point the part where it's like you think they charge too much anyway. If you think they charge too much anyway, go somewhere else. Right, that's that's, that's the free market. That's true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. competition right there. But yeah. it's like, you know what I'm saying? You got to be on your P's and yeah. Q's. Yeah. So we're yeah. both wrong on that one, right? Yeah. I think we were both wrong. Yeah. Dang, mm-hmm. damn it. Dang, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I hate this game, boy. I'm trying to turn on smart boys. I'm trying to turn what what are are these, we're we're doing doing day on a roof. Yo, and that, back is, that, that video, TikTok dude, is so bro, funny, bro. He's so he goes, funny. He goes, I work 80, day, 80 hours a week. <laughs> he said, I swear to God, dog. He said, I swear to God, dog. He said, every monster I drink is a fist for anybody in this store. <laughs> like, <laughs> what was the, was what like, was the thing? It was like, it was like, you got soft hands, brother. You got soft it was, hands. I think one of the captions that I saw was like, uh, tradesmen, when you ask how to do anything. Bro, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got like, soft hands, brother. You got soft hands. Yeah, that, that bro, is so, so funny. funny, dude. How does someone actually talk like that? Uh, smoking for 80 oh, years. That's what it is. Straight. Right? Yeah. All right. You do not hire a house painter because he or she has a personal hygiene problem. The painter asks why the job was lost. Are you honest? Wait, read that again for me. <laughs> read oh, that again for me. wow. You do not hire a house painter because he or she has a personal hygiene problem. Dang. Um, so, in other words, they stank. They're funky. Okay. Funky, big funky. <laughs> the painter asks why the job was lost. Are you honest? <laughs> Dang, uh, bro. Oh, I mean, ugh. Jeez, that's a tough one for me, actually. That's actually a really tough one for me. Because it's like, thou shalt not lie. But I'm not going to be like, I mean, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> We've dealt with this. Have we? No hints. Are you giving hints? No. No. Not truly. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go. I'm, no. I'm saying no. No. Is, there, is your answer no? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would. Look, hey, look, I, I'm all for not lying. I just feel like, I don't know. Ah, but it might be conducive to, to them to actually like yep, cleaning I up. I the same thing. Yep. You know what, dude? Okay. Okay. So here, here's, I'm going to switch my answer, but I feel like the points should be correct. I don't think I would actually have the courage to do it potentially, but I think I would think about it. I think morally, I think I should tell them, but it's, it's hard, easier said than done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because no. if it's going to prevent them from getting more jobs. But it's like, that's such an awkward conversation to it have. Is. It is. Hey, bro, like, 
man, yeah, man. I like, like I'm, I'm the I'm the contractor. Yeah, I was just wondering, dude. Like, you know, I felt like we had good communication throughout the whole process. My team was working with your team. Yeah, you, we just you, lost the job. What's going? Huh? You smell. No, I was just going to ask pitch, you. You don't do you, shower. No, I was just going to ask your you. Do you have any recommendations for your anybody breath? else who wants work? <laughs> do, excuse me. Sorry. Do you mind standing a little bit further away from me? Yes. Okay. I'll take five <laughs> steps. Can we? What do you? Shower. Just, are you talking about in regards to why I lost a job? Sir, let me ask you a question. Do you own a toothbrush? My, yes, I own a toothbrush. Do you use it? I don't see how this Matter is pertinent. Here, let me help you out. I have a card. Here you go. This is this is my dentist. He will get you right. Don't, <laughs> sir. What, what is this green liquid on your hand? What I, I what work, is I'm a carpenter. That's what I do. What about like, carpentry has green like liquid? Glue. What is this? Like, what are you trying to say? What is this? This is really unprofessional. Get out of like, my house. Okay, can you leave it? Get out of my house. I'll start reviewing. And go, okay, now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's the so stone that's how cold. You'd handle it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Something so like that. David, Let, what about you? Let's do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you stink, <stay>, nigga! <laughs> <Get up. laughs> Leave! You putrid animal! <laughs> what is that? A raccoon move! <laughs> <laughs> you might do <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Please leave. God, please leave. Please eject this man from my house. God. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. All right, Brock. I like I gotta how recover. you guys both said no. <sighs> And then when you That's what we would do yeah, I'm What like, you would do you Bro People are like We're glad y'all said it, no You took it up Such a such a level I wasn't prepared for that <laughs> My throat hurts bro Oh shit That's so funny So we both got that one right Alright Damn that's Let's do it again. What round are we on right now I don't I mean I don't know I, I think we're at seven we it, we, it might be <clears throat> right, right. Wait it, Yeah 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 Go ahead Sorry my throat hurts From that last From the yelling Take a drink I think you're on five <laughs> Oh, I do have some water. Hold on a second. Uh, Give me a second. Wait, look at your We're on six. We're on six. Don't read it. Six. <laughs> like I'm about to read it to you. Give me one second, y'all. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Ready? Yep. <clears throat> In a meeting with the department head, your superior takes credit for the work of a colleague who isn't present. You support a family and need your job. Do you set the record straight? One more time. In a meeting with the department head, your superior takes credit for the work of a colleague who isn't present. You support a family and need your job. Do you set the record straight? With the department head. Yes. <clears throat> Essentially, you go into a meeting. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The person who did the work is not present, but your superior, your boss, tells, okay, okay, okay. takes credit for the I got same it. person's work. I got it. <clears throat> do you set the record straight? And what would Nate do? Also, also, your superior is taking. It's your superior too, bro. So leaky. Well, I already <laughs> know Nate would rat me out in a second. I do it in front of everybody. He would, like, he you would. didn't do that. Yeah, he, he do already you does set, that. The question is, do you set the record straight? I got my answer, baby. <clears throat> my throat was still hurting from that. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Yes. yes. Would you set the record straight? Yep. I think I would too. As I think I, I think me, I knew it mean you were gonna have the same I, answer. I, on that I, one. I think it would be like this though. I think I would just go to whoever they were saying to him and just be like, Hey, just so you know, my this person also had like put a lot of work into this. I, I, I don't think I would be like, Hey, this my superior didn't do the work, but I, would, I, I feel like it's a little easier to advocate on someone else's behalf. I think it'd be harder if it was like, do you give yourself credit? Because I think that would then I think my answer would be no. Yeah. Like if <clears throat> depends on who the boss is. But if the big it, boss, because I always go back to that episode of The Walking Dead where Negan comes to Alexandria to get his paycheck and the main character, Rick, is away. One of his inferiors goes to Rick and go, goes to Negan and is like, Rick's not really a good leader. What does, what does Negan do instead of giving that man a promotion sticks a machete in his gut and kills him he goes 
So I'm afraid, like, I'm thinking, you know, if you have a certain type of boss, uh-huh. it, oh, he you're might say, be like, he might you're be, saying, you're saying, make sure your boss, boss isn't an absolute psychopath exactly. murderer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, Cause I feel like if, you finish, finish. I, I know, I feel like if, well, I'm your superior, right? So like if, I feel like if Greg right. came to tell me like, set the record straight, me and you are homies like that. Like, I don't know the relationship between, he don't yeah, know, yeah. he's not privy to the relationship. So you'd cut my brother's head off? I'm like, Greg, bro. You like, bite the curb. Loyalty huh? is my loyalty is my, is of the utmost priority to me. I'm gonna look down on him too, and then I'm gonna grab him by the back of his neck like that, two fingers, thumb and index, like that. I'm dragging him out of the house, bro. Get out, boy, and don't come back. Get out, boy. Yes, yeah, get so that Mustang, crazy. boy, and your tire um, flat. <clears throat> yeah, no, nah, I, I, I just. Yeah, I would, I would be like, yo, if my colleague put work in, I want him to get credit for that. Yeah, look, like, um, what were you saying? Sorry, you go said, ahead. I feel like uh, I feel like it might be a little cap only because Go ahead. I think the card implies that you're in the meeting. Your boss has said that and you're saying something. Oh, in, in real time, moment. in real time, in real time. Well, I think it's implying it says, do you set the record straight? Right. But I right. think it's implying you're in the meeting. Are you going to um, go like, well, I don't. That's not necessarily true. I didn't interpret it that way. If that's the case, I think I, I probably wouldn't say you anything. Fold? Yeah, I, th- well, I mean, I I mean, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to embarrass my boss in front of everyone. Yeah, but I mean, I might that's actually bring it up with him afterwards and be like, yo, like, you know, this person yeah. worked on it. Like, I don't know. It's 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 weird. It's like it's, it's like there's there's a time to make a stand and a time not to make a stand. What yeah. are the, what's the is someone someone's getting credit or not getting credit? Is that the frontier? And that are you going to you're going to die? on? Yeah, you exactly. Exactly. Yeah, David, for sure. How are you? How are you in the room? Because you also said that you would. Yeah, if I'm in the room, I think I agree with Nate. It's going to be t- like, I'm not going to like I said, I'm not going to embarrass or like he said, I'm not going to embarrass like my superior. But I feel like if like my if as a, as a, as a, a, a honest co-worker, I feel like it's only right to be like to handle it in some way. But there's so many ambiguous things. Like there's so many things that like, what's the tone of the yeah. of the of the yeah. hierarchy here? Yeah. What's the energy that's happening there? Is your co- do you like the coworker that you're talking about? Is that coworker working in your benefit? Like I don't know. I just feel like there's so many little things that yeah. I would take into. I account. agree. That's very, it's very ambiguous. What do yeah. you think? I mean, you're you're still in the corporate world. Um, I here's the thing. I'll tell you. This one happens thing. to you all the time, actually, doesn't it? Stuff like this does happen a lot. I'll tell you one thing for Ooh. sure. I would immediately lose all respect for my boss like instantly as soon as i said that and i would that's tell not, the that's not good leadership either i would tell my co-worker this is our boss took credit for everything that you just yeah. did but I, I don't think i would say anything because yeah I, you know what though some bosses cannot be re- someone who would do something that childish I feel like cannot be reasoned with. So like, I'm going to go say right. something to them. It's not going to change their behavior. They're just now going to, you got to, you got a target on your back, target me for different things. Yeah. There's like certain bosses too, that like, there's some ones I can think of right now from a big company that we work with every now and then. I just feel like if you were to, if you were like to approach him about that, <laughs> you know, hey, Leaky knows what's up yeah. too. If you, like, yeah. If you were to approach him like that, he would just be like, he was like, he's like, I don't care who got the credit. He'd be like, as long as the solution is present. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which yeah. might make you look stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he would do mean things to you for like yeah, the rest right. of Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think uh, I think that if you're a leader and you're taking, like, it, uh, I feel like a leader should do the exact opposite. The, opposite. the leader should yeah. give credit to their team and, and recognize, c- c- the team dude, makes you, look you, good, already, right? yeah. you are already running the team. Right. You're running the team. So you if, if your team does it, it still reflects well on you. Right. Secondly, you look good in the eyes of your, like, you if you're a leader, you don't want to like take credit for your, like your inferiors. Right. You know what I'm saying? I do want to say something. That's crazy. A compliment we got today. I was in a meeting today and uh, it was Hannah Fairlight, the audio girl. Mm -hmm. Um, And she said that, she said one thing that uh, I really like about you and Nate is she said that you guys like, she said, I don't know what it is about y'all, but y'all like everyone feels free and can have fun on the shoots. He goes, but the professionalism is still there. She just said that not unprompted. Un- That's awesome. So like, yeah. Hey, I rock. I I will say I feel that. I do feel like I feel like. That's why I enjoy being on our sets. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i saying I accept the compliment. That's awesome. Yeah. But I'm saying I do feel like our sets do have that. And I don't like being on sets where that is not the yeah. the vibe. Because it's like and I told everybody's her, I said, here to work. I you said, know? yeah, well, you know, I had to really work with Nate and make sure that he could handle that. Like, as I brought yeah. that, I was trying mm-hmm. to bring that energy into the industry. And yeah. Nate was having a hard time because he was like, all, all, I'm an introvert. All business. And yeah, and I'm yeah. an introvert. So, 
Yeah. Anyways, so, no. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was just a nice comment. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. <clears throat> I think I won. Did he? Or do we got one you more? Did. Well, it's up to you guys. You can keep going. You can stop here. Let's do one more. But Dave I think I like, won. Let's keep <clears throat> going till I'm up. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Hey, listen, bro. Honestly, I might just get up and do a silly dance with you. You know what I'm saying? I'll share in the punishment. Like, wow. like a little, Cause, we, yeah. cause we thick as these, my boy. Like a little. We forgot to do it at the beginning of the episode too. That. Oh, the dap. We didn't Great. dap. This is a, this has got to be scrapped. We're scrapping this episode. All right, last one. Last one. Okay. Oh boy, oh, okay. Tough. You are buying a house from an old lady. She is asking much too little. Do you tell her? <laughs> boy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and let's elaborate. She's got no real estate agent. She's trying to sell it by herself. Yep. She black or white? No, I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Davis True Colors come out. <laughs> He's both, actually. <laughs> like so, I don't. I don't know what that means. Clearly, that affected his decision. Okay, though. three, two, one. No. Yes. I'm saying you're saying yes. I'm saying you're saying no. What do you What do you actually Ooh. say? I actually wouldn't tell her. You wouldn't. No. I would. You would. I would. <gasps> what? You guys were both wrong. I would tell her. You would tell her. Boy. I, I, what you I would go, do, ma'am. This price should be probably a hundred dollars higher. Uh, no, I. I've actually done this with. So I, I, the reason I know I would do this is because I've done this with clients that I worked with. Yeah. It's like, if, if, if like they quote me something that I feel like I would have paid, like if they quote me too low, mm -hmm. sometimes I will try to just as a show of good faith, they'd be like, you know, how about, how about 75 for that? And I'll be like, you know what? Call it a hundred. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I would, I would just kind of, uh, I would give them a counter offer. So I would probably counter wait, wait, offer. Wait, 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 wait. I it, think there's, there's a lot of, there's, cause I would do that. I do that. Okay. But like, we're talking a house. Yeah. Right. But the numbers are much bigger. That's true. That's true. But, but I'm saying like, I can, if, if it's much too little, I can still get a good deal. And my conscience can be clear that I didn't rip off a lady who didn't know any better. Like that's gotcha. how, that's how I feel about it. So like, let's say she was asking a hundred thousand dollars for a $250,000 house. Uh -huh. and, and I would be like, you know what? Like, I, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you 150. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. I don't know. I mean, I'm just giving hypotheticals, but, but I think I would do that. I think wait, I would, wait, wait, I would feel like, would, you, would you let her know? That's the, that's the question. Would I let her know yeah, that it was not, too it's low? Not like yeah. I'm, I'm paying you more. I'm not giving you a tip. Yeah. It's like, would you let your, hey, yeah, you're I think I, I think I would be like, Hey, I feel like, I feel like you might be asking for too little. Yeah, I would yeah. rather like, let me pay you at least, at right. least this. Right. You know, I, and now, I mean, I wouldn't be like. Let me pay what the, because I still want to get a good deal, but mm -hmm. I, I don't want to rip her off. No, I feel you. But, no, mm -hmm. I like yeah. I feel like on my end, it's like if you're charging a hundred thousand for a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, then like I don't know her reasons for that. Maybe she's aware of how low she's quoting. I'm like, yo, you set the price for that. I'm like, cool, let's run it, bro. Yeah, like, I'm gonna buy it for a hundred k. I got you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, like yeah, facts. <laughs> um. You no, won, bro. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Scruples, dude. I like. I like scruples. I like this. It's fun. It's interesting conversation. Well, shoot. All right, let's let's put these boards up. Let's let's stack these cards. Put these boards. Let's up. Stack these cards and put it. It's stack the paper, dude. Okay. Now, while you guys are doing that, I did mention that there is a punishment. Yes. No. And the punishment is going to be that <clears throat> you do have it. to. No. To give us a, a dance, okay? All right. No, please. But the punishment is going to be required anytime you hear the music start playing. Okay. So let's just do a test run. <clears throat> All right, David, here we go. Oh, no. Let's see your dance. Oh, I lost. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, why, oh. why is he thugged out? <laughs> That was great. It transitioned that to was, like a thug was, thing. It that worked. was sick. I think I about pulled a back muscle. <laughs> that was actually kind of a crazy <laughs> dance, bro. Hard, it was kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard. Music, Yachty actually, would do. We need to put like Dark Knight of the Soul behind it. Hell yeah. Hell okay. yeah. All right, guys. Guess what? We have a show called Up for Debate where two people debate mundane topics. And this week, we just released an episode with John Christ and DJ Mike LV. Sheesh. What is this one? This is past versus future. Would you rather live in the past or go to the past go to the or, past go, or go, go to the future? future. Yeah, bro. That's a good topic. What do you think? I mean, I think I'd rather go to the future. I think I'd rather go to the future, but let's yeah. see what they had to debate about. Check it out. A lot of philosophers and people that I read, you probably don't know about them, but have you ever heard the quote, Greg Gatsby? That's not a philosopher, dog. Oh. That's literally Leonardo DiCaprio. You saw, you know that Greg you Gatsby? saw a gif in, on Twitter or something. You know that Greg Gatsby is like, yeah, he's going a like this. Great book. Yeah, know? great book. You know what that's about? Uh, yes. History. 
not the future. <laughs> Give me one good history future book. Uh, Ready Player One. Come on, man, be serious. What? Oh, I forgot what it's called. It's the most popular book in Catch all of history. No, Christians follow it. It's the like the Bible. Main book. Oh yeah, that one. Oh. Yeah, that's about the past. So oh, I'm just saying. We we like to do the rank order situation, right? right? And I got a really good one for you this week. Okay. Okay. Um, top three movies that changed the course of cinema. Top three movies that. Cha- what do you mean by changed the course of cinema? Okay, so not not the best movie of all time, not any of that, but movies that like when they came out, they revolutionized the way that movies were made in some way. Loofy doofy. Let's start with your number three. Okay. Number three, bro. Yep. Yo. Okay. Number three, I got to go with the shining. Why? First movie to implement the steady cam. This is the really? first time they implemented the steady cam. When he's, when he's like, mm. yeah, when, he, when they're, yeah, when they're falling the big train. wheel through the big wheel through the yep. Danny riding yep. the big wheel through the hotel. They had cool. a steady cam on that, and it was invented for that movie. The inventor, wow, yeah, the inventor the of that steady. I didn't know that. Yeah, dude, crazy, and it was super steady too. I mean, like you yeah. see it, and it's not as steady as the modern days. Right, right, right. Yeah, the inventor. Shout out to him, bro. I forgot his name, but that's um, awesome. But yeah, bro. Yeah, number two. Well, yeah, I feel like that's definitely got to be up there. It's it's up there. Number two, I'm gonna give to oh, bro, Psycho. We'll go to Psycho. Why? I don't know if I've seen Psycho. Psycho is Alfred Hitchcock. Okay, it's the, the you've seen the scenes. Probably shower knife comes yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was the first one to find a way to scare people without getting too crazy. Like we got to, we got to realize in that movie came out during a time when horror movies and like things like that, you don't see in the, in the cinemas like that. Okay. People, people were like, they're not trying to see that. They're trying to see sound of music. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. They're trying to see theatrical musical stuff that they had seen in theaters. Um, Sweeney Todd was probably the, was on the edge at the time, right? Okay. And so Psycho comes out and he finds a way, an interesting way to to make vulnerable moments for characters to be put into and to get killed in those scenes. So for instance, the shower scene, right? You have a naked woman fringe, like that's crazy, but he does it in a way where you only see her shadow. You see the outline, mm. it's vulnerable. She's naked, it's scary. Everyone has the thing, if like I wash my hair right now, I'm gonna close my eyes, is someone gonna open the curtains? Yeah, he started okay. it, right? And so the knife comes up, we see the shadow, yeah! And then it's like, bro, that was shocking audiences. They were like, what the heck? He okay. does that throughout the whole film. So it revolutionized horror films. And then bro, number one. All right. Number one, it's a, it's a, it's hard. Can I give a drum roll? Yes. I'm, I was Metro booming that, right there. That, that gun at the noise <laughs> at the end, bro. Okay, number one's a hard one, bro. And uh, it's just because there's two that are in there. Honorable mention: Star Wars. Number one has to go to Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, bro. What for for miniatures, bro? No, Lord of the Rings yeah. miniatures, green screen, like puppets. Uh-huh. They were doing everything. Now you had like Star Wars with the puppets and all that stuff too. Okay. And people was people are gonna hate me in the comments for that. But Lord of the Rings had a trilogy that was unmatched. It was you had freaking people acting in front of green screens with puppets for like twelve hours for six days a week on uh-huh. on like repeat over and over again. Yeah. It comes out and it looks effortless. I mean, Lord of the Rings still looks good to this day. Effortless, bro. To this day. And it's a three hour movie. To this day. To this day, cuz. Who was that? Percy Jackson? Deontay, what? No, 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 no. Percy Jackson directed Lord of the Rings, right? I don't know. I don't know. I'm terrible. Anyways, the movie's revolutionary. Yeah. Bro, I'm surprised you didn't say The Matrix. Because to me, The Matrix did so much by way of like, I feel like watching The Matrix at that time was like, CGI. There were all these things that were nobody had ever seen before, but it was like a series of them. I guess kind of like the Lord of the Rings yeah. effect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I like, feel like the Matrix is a good one. You know, they had the whole 3D camera thing with the with the yeah, right. They did the 3D with the, with 3D the camera. Matrix. They yeah. did. Uh, um, I mean, first off, just like the slow motion the, the stunts and everything. Yeah. Um, such iconic moments in that. The cinematography was crazy. I mean, the cinematography of that movie still holds up today yeah, for and sure. The duplicating of agent uh, of the agent. Mm-hmm. Bro, yeah, that mm-hmm. movie is. A, I feel like there's so many honorable mentions, bro. We could go over all day. What's another honorable mention? I mean, like I said, Star Wars is there. Avatar, Avatar is there. When you talk about 3D cinematography, yeah, it's like it's for sure there. It's pretty influential. I mean, you could even say any James Cameron's movies. You know what I mean? Seven Leagues Under the Sea. I mean, that didn't revolutionize the way yeah, that yeah. people. But okay, were. all right. That's let us know what we missed in the comments yeah. because there's got to be like a quintessential one. We're just we're just skimping. People on. People have their own opinions on that stuff, bro. Like you could say, you know. Been her because they use seventy millimeter Panavision. Like you, people. No, got no, no, no. I, I hear you, but I'm saying like they're like. I liked your example of the shining because like the Steadicam 
being invented exactly for that changed the course of i'm like i'm like that really i mean the steady cam is like used in almost every single movie i've like you watch there's probably not a single movie you can find right now where the steady cam wasn't at least if it, if it didn't make it into the cut it was on set yeah that's a very good point yeah yeah so okay all right that was pretty good i rock right, with bro. that i got one for you all right hit, boy. Me. hit me what are the top three most influential rap producers of all time Rap producers of all time, yes. influential. So same kind of like same kind of theme. Influential, bro. I'm talking about like okay, like move when you the listen, sound. When you it listen to sound. music, you go these two, three dudes or women made music that like push, changed push the way people made music in the future. Ooh. Tell me. <laughs> well, okay, okay. Number three, I'm gonna go with Kanye West. Ooh wee. And I and I I think I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with Kanye West's impact on rap music and just music period. Yeah. Um, you know, back in his early heyday, I mean he was producing stuff for Jay Z, but after that he had the whole the graduation and late registration and this entire soundscape. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That he presented <clears throat> every new Kanye album, you get a different sonic soundscape. And he's always he's always innovating, always pushing it forward. So I feel like Kanye West is there. Plus, like almost all of your favorite rappers were inspired by Kanye's music and approach to creation and, and stuff. So I feel Taylor like Swift. He, he's credentialed. Yeah. yeah, Taylor Swift. I mean, he made that bitch famous. He did, yeah. Um <clears throat> clip that. <laughs> uh number two, man, I'm gonna go with Pharrell. What? Really? F- Pharrell? You disagree with Pharrell? Continue. Um, Pharrell has been around for a long time. Obviously, the Neptunes. And so, like, but, I mean, he has iconic sounds that he's brought. I mean, he's had huge hits. Um, you know, Drop It Like It's Hot. He, he did a lot of that? R&B. Yeah, yeah. No way. Pharrell produced yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a hit. That's a hit. Yeah, but um, Happy. I mean, he's got, all, he's got tons of... Happy was really recent. He has tons of like classic hits, so he's been around for a long time. Also, yeah. by the way, he's the now he's taking the creative director spot from Virgil Abloh, R.I.P. the boy. But Pharrell's at uh, he's the creative director of Off White right now, isn't he? Isn't really? that right? I think so. I mean, I think he beca- I mean, and I think he's a great person for that. He also hasn't aged today. Yeah, no, I mean he's that, immortal, that, that dude he's like a vampire. is different, bro. Yeah, right. I don't know what kind of genius okay, that man. For real. So for real, dude, choice. definitely definitely for real. Like he's just he's just been a juggernaut for so long. Yeah. Number one, I'm going Timbaland. Nah. Come on, bro. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Timbaland? Not Timbaland? Now you no, come on, bro. That's not even controversial. Over Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, I think I would put it at number four. I should have hit you in the back of your neck. Who would you put Dr. Dre above? Bro, Dr. Dre, NWA, dog. Right, but we said inf- like influential as far. Look, look listen, listen. I'm, a, I'm gonna get flamed in the comments for this, but I had to pick a top three, right? So I think there's a case to be. I don't think it's I'm too out late of, to apologize now. No, it's too late. You know, speaking of that, Timbaland. <laughs> I gave you that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Timbaland, bro. He's just. I mean, man hits bro hits in the production still holds up today mm. which is something else that i think is is really really impactful is that you can go listen to missy elliott records from like the early yeah. 2000s and be like oh yeah this shit still slaps bro brush your shoulders off Oof, that's a hit. oh my gosh that's a hit bro yes i had Just a little hummer crazy, back bro. in the day one of those yellow hummers remote control that you press a button and that song played <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm going. I'm going those three now. Yeah, Dr. Dre. I think there's now. I also think if we were getting in deeper cuts, like you asked me, most influential. Yeah, maybe maybe we should do a rank order at some point with like maybe most underrated producers or something like that. Because I mean, there's a lot the of people. Mentions name a couple. I'm actually curious. Honorable mention. Yeah. Um, contemporary. I would say Metro Boomin. You got to throw him up there somewhere because Metro Boomin has been curating the the trap sound since like 2016 so i mean as far as like if you're looking at most influential producers today he's yeah. definitely up there right um let me think about another Metro? Uh, you're not gonna i mean influential though hold on influential in terms of shifting the landscape like he ha- he has produced so many records for future drake like all these all these major artists and the the sound has gone in that direction you know what I'm saying? Mm, As a result okay. of that. Okay. Um, now, I would say 
some of my favorite producers that I think are super underrated, uh, Jake One. Jake One has some incredible records. Uh, it, when I looked at his credits, I was like, dang, bro. Like, I love all of these beats. These are yeah. some of my favorite beats. Yeah. I would say uh, another underrated producer is Teddy Walton. So he did Love with Kendrick. Oh, but, but I he love all, that song. Right? Beautiful song, right? Right. He, but he also did Crew with Gold Link. Well, how, wait, what's that? how's that go? They say money all around me. Shit. Oh, I yeah, that's like a hit, bro. That is so a hit. Teddy, he's a producer where I feel like his involvement, he's like batting a thousand in terms of like classic hit type yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, and, and his other work is, is crazy there too. I would say Clams Casino. I mean, we got all kinds of producers we could get into. Right. But yeah. Yeah. There's well, some bro, good ones. Thanks for that. I mean, now you're saying, I, I, I know I pushed back on Pharrell, but one of my favorite albums of all time is Random Access Memories and Pharrell had a big hand in that with Daft yeah. Punk. So, yeah. Uh, I think that was a valid choice. I, yeah. have, I have something to add. So, I Who's just that? for fun looked up Pharrell's biggest songs of all time. Yeah. <gasps> there's huge ones. I just didn't know that Pharrell produced some of these. So, <gasps> Uh, one is my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. That's Pharrell. Wow. Well, he put he wow. produced that too. Uh, yes. And then Britney Spears, I'm a slave for you. Okay. Do y'all know that one? How's Maybe that not. go, Lukey? I know it's your favorite song, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Um, you really want me to sing it? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. Oh no, not if it's inappropriate. No. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not. It's not that inappropriate. Okay. It's like it, it, here it goes like this. Play video games. Anyway, my husband loves this and he uses this every day for work. Oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. That sounds great. Oh, yeah, that's a hit. That's a hit. That Keep one. it pushing. Keep it pushing. Skip it. They don't need to hear Britney Spears. She's Everybody knows she's, she's like huge. on Instagram with knives <laughs> okay, and shit. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. <laughs> it sounds like this. So let me go and just listen. All you people look at me like Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. I right, okay. cut it so we don't yeah. get blocked. Okay, that's the song. For real, okay, making here's hits, some other bro. ones. Drop it like it's hot. I said that. He said that. Okay. Oh, you said that one. Yeah, Drop if you listen like to the podcast, you'd know I that. wasn't. Listen. Okay, here's a, here's another one. <laughs> Look, you so the hell while we were talking. She's like, these these two idiots. Hot in here. It's getting okay. hot. Nelly? Yeah. By Nelly? Yep. Yeah. No That's way. a great one. Y'all, how old is Pharrell? That's what I'm Bro, saying. he's a thousand years old, but he's, looks like he's 20. He, yeah. How is that possible? He's a vampire. Literally. His skin is ridiculous. Yes. Throw a piece of garlic at that man. He might disintegrate. Holla back, girl. Ain't no holla back. Oh my gosh, bro. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Fergie, right? Wait, you know who did Rich Girl? Who? If I was a rich girl. You know who did that? For Dr. Real? Dre. Really? Yep. Dang, Dr. Bro. Dre, dude. I'm surprised Pharrell ain't number look, one look, now. Dr. Dre's definitely up there, but no. Can you look up Timbaland's credits, though? Timbaland's probably stupid. Look at Timbaland's it? credits it's because crazy. it's it's ridiculous. All I know is too late. I mean, I know he's, I've known more songs. I just, I'm not aware of it. Well, he's on that song. Timblins on uh, Too Late to Apologize with Justin. Oh, he did Sexy Back. Oh, he my did Sexy goodness. Back. I'm bringing he Sexy did, uh, Back. He did so many yeah. Missy Elliott. I already did. Uh, he did Dirt Missy Elliott's? Bro, he's he did all what? of Missy Elliott's biggest songs. I love Missy Elliott. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, I thought here she still produced them. Without <laughs> me having looked through this yet, I'm just going to start at number one. Let's okay. see it. Let's see it. Apologize. You yep. guys talk about yep. that one. Yep. Uh, promiscuous. Nelly Promiscuous. Furtado. Yep. Promiscuous uh, girl. Nelly Furtado. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that, was, but past, that was a bro. smash, though. That was a smash. Yes, I love that song. And that's him on the hook. How you know what know? I want. Is and it? I got what you oh, need. Yeah, yeah, that's Promiscuous right, that's right. girl. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Way I Are, Carrie Hilson. That, he's also on that song, I that, think. Yeah, that's his song. So he'd be that's putting his, his vocals. Song, yeah, Carrie I like Hilson. that. Yep. Sexy Back, y'all talked about that yep. one. Sexy uh, Back. Oh. Sexy Back, by the way, is a smash. M Missy Elliott, if it worth it, let me work. Oh, it. my yeah. gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He well, I love well Missy Elliott, bro. I think spot, Missy, bro. by the way, Missy Elliott. Oh, you know what? For another day, rank order, best female hip hop artist of all time. Bro. I'm doing that next we time. We can do that. Yes. Yes. Let's, let's, we can let's talk all day about that. That's a whole show right there, my boy. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, oh, so much of ju for Justin Timberlake. Cry me a river. Oh, oh. Timberlake, uh, he's a goat. What goes around comes back around. Both Justin Timberlake. Okay, Justin was huge at that time, bro. Cry me a river. Dirt off oh. your shoulders. Did y'all yep, say that? Yeah, we one? said that one. That that's an iconic ass beat. How's bro. that go? Get your free. Oh, that's the one you're yep. talking about. Get your, Miss Get your free. Yeah. Oh my yep. gosh. Yep. Classics, dude. All right. I feel like I feel like that's good. They know what's up. Zam Simbalin's <laughs> really good. <laughs> what? I feel like if you're talking about art, you gotta have like an art artsy voice. Okay, okay. All right, you know fair what? enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, hey, how, just how, for that. Zam Zaziki. I could do do a different dance. <laughs> hey, yo! 
Hell yeah, brother. Get on down. Hell yeah, brother. Okay, don't. <laughs> no, <All right>. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> What? I was just getting that's down a, from the, that's a violation, I was getting bro. down from the dance. <laughs> what is this? I was getting down from the dance. That was great. If you've seen a little motion. I feel like I'm on the podcast with Diddy right now. <laughs> no Diddy falls, dog. <laughs> well, dude, what, what else is going on in life, bro? What we got going on right now? We uh, gotta, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, I'm, I'm trying to say, I'm just trying to keep my head above water, I'm bro. I'm tired, <laughs> man. <laughs> man? <laughs> I'm tired, boss. Uh, I mean, bro, I mean, you start. What you got going on? What I got going on? Well, uh, I'm finishing up this album. Yep. I can't, I'm not going to say the name of it yet. Don't tell him yet. I'm not going to tell him yet. But, hey, we shot some crazy visuals, and we have yeah. a bunch of treatments for other visuals. I, I really can't wait. I think this rollout is going to be epic. Yeah. And I put together, this is finally like the year where I've properly put together a team. So you're yeah. handing, handling all the visual side right. of the entire album, which I think is super cool. Which I'm excited to. And I'm, I'm excited we're taking our t time on it because really at the end of the day, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, you know? Yeah, big facts. Right. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> None. Uh, so, yeah, and then, uh, but I have I have a great visual team, you know what I'm saying? Mowgli is doing all the single covers he is, uh, with, yes. in, in AI, Mid Journey, and then pulling them into Photoshop. Right. He's he's developed some great He's things for it, that. Yeah. We got we got a great merch team and graphic team, and uh, I, I'm, I'm actually hiring a publicist for this album, which I've never hired a publicist before, so I think we're going to we're gonna gonna go make a, a couple trips to LA and New York yeah. and, and get some... Um, get some PR stuff in really speaking of whenever we end up doing those, I'll, I'll see if you want to come out there and we can just like, we'll maximize it. Cause we might as well shoot content in, in those cities. Like I'll just book you LA, up. New York. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, sick. New York, you know, uh, of course, like New York, New York is, bro. is aesthetically yes. yeah. beautiful. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's one big thing that's coming up with me. Um, there's another big thing that's coming up with me that I can't talk about yet. And then, um, uh, I'm about to go to Seattle. For real? Yeah, I'm about to go to Seattle. So but it's about to get into an anniversary. Oh, for how many years? How, well, <laughs> how many years? Married? Yeah, it's coming up on our one year anniversary. Uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm unimpressed now. Why do you like? I, th I was well, years we, plural. Wow. Huh? No, I'm joking. I'm wow. joking. That's lit, yeah. bro. That's lit. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you been, you've been to Seattle though. I have been to Seattle. It's so fun. we we really just want to get first off. We just wanted to take a trip. We're trying to get four trips in a year. Yeah. And so we, we we've done one already. Where, where did we go at the top of the year? We went trips. to Asheville, North Carolina. We did, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. yeah. And then, and so we got to hit our second one. And I think uh, y'all doing quarterly trips? Is that what it is? I, we're trying to do that. Dude, I want to do that. I need to start doing that. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's easy if it's domestic. Like a flight to Seattle is like two hundred bucks. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then you just you split Airbnb or something. Right. But, um, but yeah, dude. So we're gonna go up there. I, I want to see some nature. Like it's a different, Ooh, it's a completely like different part yeah. of the, the, the U S like it's, it, you know, we're in Tennessee, LA has its own like vibe and feel to it, but yeah. up there, up there, it's like woods and rain and sure, sure. mountains yeah. and lakes and stuff like that. So we're going to do that. Uh, also like space needle, there's certain iconic stuff things. you want to see. Food. You can eat dinner in the We're space doing a coffee too. tour. It's hard to get into. Oh yeah. Let's look into that. Are we going to do a dinner up there? We can, if you want. Reservations. I better start setting them. I think. Well, I yeah, think it might, it might be a little late. We'll find out, yeah. but yeah, dude. So Seattle, that's that's another thing we we're looking forward to. Yeah. I haven't been there. Uh, it's one of my biggest listen listening cities, actually. Seattle. Yeah, like one like really? I think on Spotify in the past twenty eight days have been like six thousand unique that's people. That's in actually Seattle. That's crazy. Yeah. So, hey man, dude, I can't wait for one day. I'm just gonna get recognized. That would be cool. Bro, I mean, I hope that you're just on the <clears> pier or whatever. So. I've never been to a and they're like night rows. Yeah, actually, no, that's not true. I got recognized uh, at Universal once. Yeah, Leaky, you remember that? That's kind of cool. I do. It was a, it was a guy who's a fan, but he was he's also like was friends with my my cousin. Yeah, you know. So I was like, that's kind of crazy, dude. I've had I know how that must feel. I've had it happen two times, which I haven't uh -huh. told the story on the show, but I told you. Uh huh. Um, which was when I was with my ex, I was uh -huh. at a party, so it was already it was already cooler because I was with the girl I was with at the time, right? Yep. It was her friends and some friends she didn't know some of her roommates friends so it was just like a bunch of it was a bunch of girls yeah and we're all playing a game of uno or something right uh -huh. and this dude comes in he's like one of the few guys pops in he has a camera and he's like yo bro like and this is back at my hometown and he's like 
yo, I'm taking some photos and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, dude, what type of stuff do you like? And he goes, he goes, honestly, man, like, I'm just kind of finding my style right now. He goes, I like this one guy on Instagram. His name's David Pearsall. And I was like, oh, that's me, bro. And I remember it's like him recognize me and all the girls around. I was like, hey, I look cool as hell right now. I look dope <laughs> wait, right wait, now. Wait, hey, yo. He said, I like this guy, David. And he Pearsall, showed me his he was he dial. Didn't know that he he didn't know it was me. He didn't know it was well, me. Well, it was your cinematography style. It was my, he was like, I, he was trying you're, to find his style. And he was like, I like this, the stuff that this guy, David, oh, makes on like Instagram. He wasn't, he wasn't looking at your Instagram of like pictures of you. No, no. He, he was like, yeah. I like the stuff that this guy makes on Instagram. Oh, okay, and he was okay. like, and I was like, what's his, what's his name on Instagram? He goes, David. Pearsall, That's which is my crazy. Tag. That is crazy. He said my last name wrong. But I remember, like, most people do. He, what do they, people usually say? They say like Pierce. They say Pierce Soul or like Pierce, some people say Pearson. Like it's just oh, oh. Just, just people that just can't read. Some people get it right, but it's weird. It's I guess it yeah. is not. It's not a common last name, of course. Yeah, but, but Pier is spelled like Pier. Yeah, you're right. You're and right. Then yeah, S A U L. People usually aren't. They're usually checking me out when they say it wrong. Okay, too or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, dude, I, I got a pretty uh, I got a pretty fun one. What uh, time like, I I got recognized? It was like a so random. I think I've, I might I may have told you this. Wait, before. this is the cool one that on Broadway. <laughs> yeah, oh man, dude. I love this story, bro. This is so funny because okay, all right. So uh, my guy Brad Varsity, he's a rapper in Chicago. He was coming down for one of his to Nashville for one of his friends' bachelor trips, mm -hmm. and so we we started like drinking and playing um, playing games and stuff like that at my apartment. They came through, and then they were like, "Yo, let's go like let's Uber to Broadway." You know what I'm saying? Because they hadn't they wanted to go do the the Broadway thing. Yeah. Um. So we all get into separate Ubers. And one, one one quick note about this is that Brad's friends hadn't met me, but through him they knew of me. So they yeah. were they like liked the music, you know right. what I'm saying? So but they, they were meeting me for the first time, but they had been listening to to music. And so I took an Uber with them and we get down to Broadway and we, we step out and as soon as we step out of the Uber, I hear Nate Rose and I'm like, What like, but it sounded loud. Yeah. And so I looked to my right. And if you don't know this about Broadway in Nashville, there are, there's music being played on stages at every like bar all the way down. But we ended up getting dropped off right by a bar where a band was playing and there was like a ton of people in the crowd and it has like an open, uh, open window. window so people yeah. can see in the guy on stage recognized me getting out of the Uber and was like, Nate Rose. He said, he said that. Shout out my favorite rapper in Nashville. Go listen to his music. And okay? everyone in the restaurant turned around? Yeah, people were looking That's at me out, outside. But yeah. as soon as I stepped out the Uber. Yeah. So so picture the perspective from these guys, which is like they came down from Chicago to my yeah. city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being fans, we step out of the car. And then as soon as our feet touch the ground... The guy on stage is like, that's my favorite rapper in Nashville. That's, like, yeah, that's a crazy it was just experience. Like, and I, you got your homies with you, and you're put, you're taking them. Through I'm the city. taking them. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you kind of, you kind of got the keys or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what it, that's what it looked like. It's yeah. funny, like you know, don't tell them this, but like that doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> no, right. But but to them, the perception of that is just like that's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. Brad doesn't so, watch it. We ain't gonna tell him. Yeah, I, mean, I don't friends. think Brad watches it. But you Yo. know, shout out Brad Varsity. Yeah, well, dude. I mean, very quick, dude. I just want to talk about a moment of vulnerability that, like, I think would be cool for people to hear. Okay. Uh, I've mentioned it before. I'm working on my film. Right. And like, yep. I got this, I shot this whole, like I wrote this whole script for a campaign launch video. And so I'm trying to raise 20 K for this film and I haven't launched it yet, but I shot this whole video thing. And a day before I started shooting the video, I had a meeting with the actresses for the first time together. And bro, I was, I was like insanely nervous, insanely nervous. And it's like, I, t and I remember being on the call and I had my producer and I had the two actresses. I'm like, yo, y'all meeting this and that. And I'm like nervous and I'm just fumbling my words and like this and that. Because for me, it's like I do music videos. I do, I can do commercial. Anytime where I'm like doing something I know, it's like I'm confident now. But now I'm yep. outside of my element. Yeah. And so I was fumbling and I remember just being like, I mean, we got off the call and I was, I was, it bothered me for the rest of the day because I'm like, uh, I'm frustrated. Before I go too far though, I was like on the call and I said, I looked at both of them and I said, hey, I just want y'all to know this is my first time, like really my first time trying to do something for real. I'm, I, th I said that like, I'm not as confident as I'm trying to come off. I am very nervous. And they all laughed and he was like, Oh, no worries, dude. Like this and that. I mean, it's like, cause I don't work with actors. Yeah. And so like, I want, I like my initial idea was to make them feel like I know exactly what I'm doing yep. and make them feel yep. confident at the same time. But they already are on board for the project. Yeah. They like the script and they're getting paid they, for it. Right. They like so the like, story. Yeah. And they, and they came, they were like, I would have come on for for uh for free is because yep. i didn't even tell the price yet and i told them the price that they said that and i'm like yeah they like what they're doing it's like david you just have to execute 
your vision, um, how you get there is so many, is, is a lot of different routes. And so, yeah. I just want to say, like, when I told them I was nervous, that relieved, like, a huge, like, stressor. Yep. And even though it bothered me for the rest of the day, uh, I was like, you know what, dude? Like, it's your first time. Like, don't, you know, you know it's yeah. going to happen sometimes. Also, yeah, that takes all the pressure off of it. Because right, if you're trying right. to, if, yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't relieve that, then you're, like, fumbling, but you're trying to take yourself too seriously yeah. or something. So, uh, yeah, exactly. I, th- I think that's, I think that's great, bro. And also, all the growth happens on the other side of, like, being uncomfortable and doing uncomfortable things. I've had the same thing, bro. The first time I ever, ever, like pitched uh f- for the sponsors or whatever it's like or or even the first time i pitched for our um video thing yeah, yeah. i was or our video package i was like okay well like i gotta really like be get back into my uh-huh. salesman bag you know what i'm saying so um but you know once you do it you start you just add another you know skill there and like you're gonna acclimate to this over the course of doing all the pre-production and sure. stuff that's necessary yeah. like i think by the time it's shoot you're gonna be comfortable with these people Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, dude, I think you're gonna be crushing it. I appreciate you saying that, and I always go back to multiple interviews with multiple directors. You always say like, uh, they when they get on set, I'm talking big directors. They get on set and they say the first day I'm always about to throw up. It's always the scariest thing. Steven Spielberg. We're talking Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's why he's like I'm always nervous. And it's like, bro, think about what 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 James Cameron is doing. He's yeah. going. I'm doing the newest thing, the most hip technology. I'm put or Steven Spielberg. I'm bringing crazy cosmetic, money on I'm the bringing line. Huge dinosaurs. Crazy. Yeah, I don't even have millions of dollars. Like a company going. Are we going to pay you fifty million bucks? And we want you to make it back triple fold. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't imagine. So yeah. I, I'm excited to take this on, and, and I just want to, any words for and for some words for I'm fumbling now because I'm nervous. <laughs> words for inspiration though for people, anything you're doing new, it's like just do it. That's better. It's better to do it in the fumble and and learn from that than to not do it at all. Facts, facts, facts. Put that on a scruple card. Yeah, honestly, even it's not a dilemma. No, that that's great advice, bro. I think that it, it's so interesting because every time you do something new, it's uncomfortable. It's like, That's every, a good point. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean? And then, but then when you do it consistently enough that you start to get used to it, it becomes not uncomfortable. And if you do that with enough things, you just gain a certain level of comp- confidence about life. Right. That's part of what maturing is, is like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I've it. never, I've never yeah. done this. I've never done that. I've never like had to go to court. I've never had to do this, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's nerve wracking. And then you kind of get used to like, oh, like this is just, this is just a process that I have now you know, taxes was like that or learning about personal finance. And so you just have to get exposed to it enough to become familiar with it. Right. And then all the boogeyman aspect of it, you realize actually, no, I, I, like I conquered it. Um, Jordan Peterson talks about this a lot, which is, is that, uh, what you do in a, in, if people are afraid of things, people have phobias mm-hmm. in a, in a psychological practice, it, you, the, the way to get around that is voluntary exposure to the thing at the degree that they can handle. Mm. So he, he gave the example of a lady he, who was uh, afraid of elevators. And so it was kind of like, yo, well, could, could we look at photos of elevators? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. And if she agreed to that, the voluntary exposure, boom. Okay. I looked at a photo of it. All right. That wasn't too bad. I can handle that. Okay. Maybe next week, let's just like walk towards an elevator Mm -hmm. and see how far we can go and that sort of thing and he said essentially you don't he said what happens with over time with these people is that the fear doesn't go away they just become more courageous Mm. so they're they're still afraid of it but they're still they're able to overcome the fear because they've real like there's more courageous yeah exactly so i think that that is true just all around you know what i'm saying yeah. so expose yourself to difficult things and, and challenging things um voluntarily and you you will grow a lot as a person i think so wise words from a decent man i don't know about that, that last was part back but when i was trying to put a ring on alicia's hand that's drake lyrics oh drake yeah. <laughs> the boy <laughs> all right man well hey i feel like this was a great episode dude scruples yeah bro uh directors you know what i'm saying fun stuff um, just very enjoyable topics overall yeah, yeah. yeah bro you had me crying laughing bro <laughs> it's very enjoyable topics yeah, if you know? yeah we should you name know, the, t- the episode that very enjoyable topics Pick a C's podcast episode insert number and then put enjoyable talk it topics for people to listen to you yeah okay what, I mean? uh, what do you think yeah, dude. That? Like, is that clickbait enough i think so yeah, uh, I mean. well what, what about <laughs> what if we what if we named it two guys talking about stuff that's what since, I mean, according to that one comment about the guy who said two jabronis <laughs> starting a podcast is exactly what we're doing. Yeah. And it was valid. But all right, man. Well, hey, till next time. Let's get it. Peace. Yeah, baby, need top five when I'm